Look big red. red. <laughs> Look at this big fella here dressed in Nebraska red. That's Elliot Gould, don't you know? And he said that he was on our side against Miami in the Orange Bowl. Is Marcus Dupre still at the university? No, he's playing. Uh, he's at, he's, at he's a in the USFL now. This is no. He was in Oklahoma. Learn, this is Go Big well, Red who's Nebraska. The great, who's the great uh, runner for uh, Nebraska? You, well, we've got a lot of them. We have, huh? huh? We oh, have Rosier, Mike right. Rozier and Irving uh, Fryer. Rozier and, and uh, oh, Irving Fryer. Yes, a Jewish the, boy. Oh, <laughs> the Flying Fryer, Irving. Yeah. Irving Fryer. Listen, did you see? Uh, did you see? Look what I, I wore just for you. Cross triangles. No, my star of David. Have you called them cross triangles? Well, that's what it is, two triangles. I guess it must represent uh, the uh, merging of two families in a marriage. Is that what is that what that really means? I, well, it does mean that, but I, uh, I think so. It's now you're Jewish, you would know. Yeah. See, this was given to me because they said you are a star, mm -hmm. and you should have a star that has the most points on it. Mm -hmm. But it really means marriage and. I think so. They're, they're cross triangles. We're not but at cross purposes. No, no, we have to, we have to join. Okay, let's join. Let's. Happy birthday to you. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Hey, birthday dear Elliot. Happy birthday to you. Uh, what did you yeah. wish for? Uh, I didn't wish for anything. You have to do that before you blow out the candle, well, Elliot. That's cuss. That's tradition. Uh, well, I wished for. Uh, I didn't really wish for anything. So the next time I'll have to be sure to make a wish. Okay. Let's go back a couple of years. What would I wish for? <laughs> now that you're one year older, let's yes. go back. Twenty years ago, you've been in you've been in movies. You've made twenty movies, and it's been thirty four. I think you've made thirty four. But we're going back, so it's uh, we're going back to when I made twenty. We're going to go back to um, fifteen years ago when you made Mash, the original Mash. Mm -hmm. That's been it doesn't really like fifteen years, mm -hmm. and I think you remember here most for Bob and Ted and Carol and Alice and Nashville and the Muppet movie. Do you have any regrets about not going into the series for Mash? No. No? They've all mm. made a fortune, Elliot. Well, it's okay. That's okay? Mm -hmm. You don't deny it? No, no. Weren't you available or weren't you interested? At the time? Mm -hmm. um, and nobody asked me at the oh. time, but I, <laughs> well. I was also in, you know, upstairs thinking, well, I, at that time, I didn't think that I was uh, prepared to repeat myself, and I didn't want to do a series based on something that I had already done. Mm -hmm. And I felt that I had more work to do uh, in life to not to repeat myself, just to continue to uh, go into new areas. But now I find doing my series now, it's a whole new area for me, and I'm really thrilled with the prospects of having a character relative to the kind of character I played in MASH uh, yeah. in a world that exists now. Mm -hmm. This new series on CBS is called ER, which stands for Emergency Room. And he is an otorhinolaryngologist. That's right. Right. He's an ear, nose, and throat person who is doing work in the emergency room to pick up a little extra cash because mm -hmm. he's got a couple of divorced wives who are making their demands. Like I say, my life isn't perfect, but I'm very good at what I do. Did you see Young Doctors in Love? Yes, I did. did do you think there's a similarity? Uh, my staff, yeah, that, that seems to be like what goes on. I mean, we're... You know, we work around the clock, and uh, it gets uh, very uh, chaotic and crazy sometimes. Did you say something anybody be interested in? <laughs> Phyllis, that's impossible. I'm not going to pretend that everything's fine. You'll have to tell your parents sooner or later that we're not together anymore. <laughs> Look, I don't care if it is the high holidays. I'm not coming for dinner. Goodbye. <laughs> what high holiday is it? Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. Oh, yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> hey, Maria, what have we got? We got an ankle that doesn't seem too bad, a severe headache, and Irene's back in today. And the nurses in pediatrics want to know if you're coming to their party. A party with balloons? I guess. <laughs> Tell me about it later. I was here first. I've told you a million times, Irene, there's nothing wrong with you. Are you so sure? Suppose I walk out of here and die. Are you going to be able to live with that? You look fine to me, Irene. I'm wearing makeup. <laughs> Joan, take her vital signs. By the way, are you and Bud coming to the party? Nah, at 1 a.m. he watches the honeymooners, and then he has to get up early tomorrow morning. Job interview? Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Curtis, uh, can you come with me, please? Pharmacy, 706. 
Ooh, he's so cute. I can't believe you haven't gone out with him. He works for me. He works for me, too. <laughs> Let's talk about Jason. Jason is a 17-year-old son with Barbara Streisand, and I understand that he made a little movie, and that you helped him with it, or you were in it, or you helped him edit it? Well, I just acted in it for him, and I saw, uh, assist him. And he, uh, it's more than just a little movie. He wrote a screenplay that I, I was able to help him with, and uh, he, uh, produced it and directed it and edited it and scored it and says, I, I hope it doesn't seem pretentious. I don't want to put too much attention on myself, but he really has done everything. And he's a great uh, young uh, man. And uh, How good is this little first adventure? I think it's uh, better than 99 or 44, oh, yeah? 100 percent of the commercial product being produced today. Oh, yes. I do, yeah. And put stock in your kid. He's got my heart He's and got soul. I, yeah. Did he see you on Saturday Night Live? Uh, yes, I gave him the, t the tapes of every show I did. What, is he, what do you think? Well, I th my children are, are coming on to my uh, appearances on Saturday Night Live now um, more than when they were younger when I did the shows. And I think they're thrilled to see their old-fashioned father be able to keep up with this uh, uh, perspective of, of life. You don't consider yourself a great actor, do you? I do. You do? Of course. I, I, I consider myself a great actor. I thought that you considered yourself more playing the kind of person you were than really taking on those roles out there that were different than you. No, not really. I give that impression. I, you know, I, I give an impression. Like I told you, I'm serious. And yeah. I, I, I practice uh, modesty and humility because I don't <laughs> want to allow my uh, ego or my sense of myself to uh, imbalance the... Uh, everyday aspect of me being a simple, everyday person. Uh, but I do consider myself uh, uh, a great actor. Well, so did Ingmar Bergman, because you were the first American to perform in an Ingmar Bergman film, so he must have seen something. Yeah, uh, equality. And uh, I just, I did a film last year with a, a young Austrian filmmaker named Peter Patzik, and uh, he all published a book about the qua my qua our quality. It's a quality that is, uh, I think, in nature and relative to my upbringing and what it is that I believe I have to contribute. Well, what did you do for Bergman? Well, I was able to uh, make an autobiographical biographical picture uh, that he wrote where I played his character and the woman that he married he's been able to stay with and his life seems to be more stable and secure since we came across to make this picture. Is he as good as they say he is? As a ar film artist? Yeah. Better. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Because those first things, Wild Strawberries, you know, mm -hmm. way back then, those were the first foreign films I had ever seen, and I was shocked by them. He made uh, milk commercials in the theater, you know, in, in European theaters there are commercials in the movie theaters. Milk? Well, he made a commercial for milk, Bergman did when he was in his mid-30s. Uh, he used to make commercials, and he also does TV, and uh, his wife uh, tells me that he doesn't leave the house much. He watches a lot of television. My goodness. Did you see Fanny and Alexander? Oh, yes. The yeah. color, the lush colors. Oh, oh yeah. Right. He's, oh, it's he's beautiful. Great. Well, what an honor for you to have been in one of his films. Yeah. It's also, it's I honor feel like there's a laugh coming right. I, I, right? He's so serious. I feel like right under there is this very skinny little person who wants to come out and laugh. Yeah. Well, no, honor. You know, I, ha I sometimes I have a thing, and my character is irreverent, and honor is something, uh, pride. I think I, I, pr I appreciate pride. I think I can relate more to pride than honor. Pride goeth before a fall, mm. Elliot. Well, I, I have to. The first play I ever appeared in was called Some Little Honor, and it was by Josephine Bentham, and it was in 1952. It was the first time I ever had a speaking role in a play other than Tom Sawyer where I played Joe Harper. Do you know that you don't blink very often? Yes, you do. <laughs> no, it's just curious. You have these big eyes, and then don't. Neither do American Eagles. American Eagles don't blink much. Well, well, you, well but you've got too much hair for that. I'm not a bald eagle yet. <laughs> right. Nice to meet you, Mr. Thank Gould. You. Elliot Gould is his name, of course. 
and he's here on 1011 Strong. The program is Emergency Room, ER. Correct. Pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Please stay tuned. There's much more to come.